Hey guys, welcome back. Let me introduce you to one of our new projects. Um, this is a 1974-0309 Mercedes minibus that I just bought from an old man that was getting ready to have an auction. Um, it's been sitting there for over a year. I've wanted to ask the guy numerous times about it and it's in a locked parking lot. And I saw him there the other day and I stopped and asked him if he wanted to sell it. I agreed on a price. I paid him $2,800 for this van plus another frame with an extra engine, transmission, rear end. Now, I haven't heard it run. Hopefully it does run. He said it used to run before he parked it. So that is going to be our project for today, seeing if we can get it up and running. Now there's a few things we should check on any old vehicle before we tried running it if it hasn't been run before. And that is, does it have oil? Does it have coolant? Does it have fuel? Um, I did check the oil, it's at the bottom of the dipstick. I can't see any antifreeze in the radiator, but if it starts up and runs, um, we'll shut it off and then make sure that we top up that radiator before we drive it. Power steering fluid, um, there was fluid in there, in the reservoir. Brake system, I don't know yet but we'll figure that out once we have it up and running. Now, there was a little bit of a rat's nest on top of the engine. I haven't cleaned all that stuff off yet, um, but it shouldn't interfere with our ability to get it to run. There's a few things that are kind of different on this vehicle compared to most vehicles. It has two 12 volt batteries and it has a couple of solenoids that change the way that those batteries are hooked up. During normal driving operation, it's a 12 volt system. The batteries are hooked up in parallel and the alternator charges both batteries. When you're starting it, it switches over to 24 volts to run the starter so it can spin the engine a little bit faster. I'm hoping all of that system works properly. I don't know how it works yet. I haven't looked at wiring diagrams, but I know there is a solenoid pack next to the driver's seat. So let's go ahead and get inside. We'll hook some jump packs up to the batteries and see if we can crank it over and get this thing to start up. So this bus was originally used for hauling people. Um, so it does not have a passenger seat. It's got the old flip open bus door. We may be changing that and putting some sort of passenger seat here, but in order for that to work, because there's only the two doors on the van, um, we'll have to get a seat that can flip up and over. I already have the doghouse off. Um, I do need to try and get this seat to move. Let me try to get the seat either moved all the way forward or all the way back so we can get better access to the batteries and we'll go from there. Okay. I think the seat's supposed to go off the back, but I couldn't get it that way. I did get it to go off the front. Um, we have to do some work on the seat tracks, although I'm probably gonna be switching seats because that seat is not the most comfortable thing. So I don't want to use you know, a common ground as I'm doing this because it has the solenoid packs that switch it from 24 to 12 from 12 volts to 24 volts so i want to go to each battery on their own now these batteries are junk um, i did pop the caps and they look like they've been frozen there's very little water left in them um, hopefully they don't blow up or anything stupid on us and today was the first day i've had the key in my possession and it's kind of a funky looking key Ugh. looks like you wouldn't need much more than a a nail in order to jump start this thing but maybe it's more sophisticated than it looks okay so we got two jump packs hooked up to the battery the shifter is in neutral now if it doesn't start up easily or like rapidly which i don't expect it to then we're probably going to uh, need to prime, you know, the fuel system. So I'm gonna turn the key. I do see lights light up. I don't know if one mode is for glow plugs. I really don't know anything about this. It just says zero, one, and two, and there's a start button. Unfortunately, the start button isn't doing anything. So I don't know if I need to have the clutch pushed down. 
if something is broken. I don't hear any clicking. We also have quite a few wires hanging out of the dash. Um, the gauges are loose. So I don't really know <laughs> what I'm gonna find in here. And it looks like some critters have been living inside of there as well. Maybe these batteries are sucking the life out of my jump packs and I may just have to buy some new batteries to uh, get this system up and running. But I don't hear a click or anything, so I think we got something else going on. Okay, I have new batteries installed and I have a functioning power probe. Um, so this is the relay that controls the batteries from 12 volts to 24 volts or something along those lines. Not exactly sure how it works. I've been unable to find a wiring diagram that matches the vehicle. Actually, any wiring diagrams related to the vehicle. I have a feeling I'm probably gonna have to do some like Google Translate or something to find diagrams for this um, because my English search terms uh, came up with nothing. Um, so this lug here, I have 12 volts. This one I have um, zero. Now I don't know, I'm guessing that they bridge these together whenever you go to crank it to run the batteries in 24 volt mode. Um, and I don't know exactly how the, what all these other wires are. But I think this one here if I push the start button on the dash, I get power. Yes, so 11.3 volts if I touch that, but I don't hear any clicking happening. So I'm gonna hold the button down and I'm gonna tap on this. I still get nothing. I'm guessing that I have an issue here somewhere. Because I don't get any other change when I push the button. Except for that one wire. Okay. I'm exhausted already and I haven't done much. But I did take all the wires off the solenoid pack, flipped it over, and it has heavy water damage. Um, I'll have to take it apart again to get some pictures of it. I should have done that. But it has a big solenoid, big winding in there. And then as it moves, it breaks two contacts and then connects another two contacts. So that's probably it, breaking some of the 12 volt connections and switching over to maybe 12 volts off a single battery and then bridging the other two batteries together. When I push the button on the dash now, the engine tried to crank over. That's as far as I went before I grabbed you guys again. So I don't know how to operate the glow plugs. I don't know if I need to, but we're gonna go ahead and, and crank it over and see if we get any life. I still kind of doubt it. We'll probably still have to prime the fuel system. <laughs> oh, and I think my solenoid might have died again or something. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to flip the solenoid over again anyways. Um, I'm probably gonna have to do some heavy cleaning in there and whatnot to try and get this thing to actually be reliable. I know the other frame that I bought has a um, a solenoid sitting there, but it's been exposed to the weather for who knows how many years. And now that I'm thinking about it, I have Valerie in here with me. Um, once, it, if it does start, the fan 
is going to blow stuff from the engine <laughs> all over you, including <laughs> all of the cactus that the pack rat <laughs> brought in. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and prime the fuel system. Um, I can see a fuel pump on the side of the engine. It has a little knob. I'm guessing that if I unscrew that knob, I can prime the fuel system. And hopefully that's what it takes to get it started. I am glad to hear it crank over. It sounds like the compression is relatively even between the cylinders. That doesn't mean it's good, but um, that means that there's probably not any stuck valves or anything like that. Go ahead and remove the key. It's got a funky key. You push the key in and the lights light up. There's two positions, three positions of it, but I don't know what any of it does. So I'm gonna go ahead and try and prime the fuel system. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this one up here. And in the next episode, you can watch me try to get the fuel system primed up so we can try to fire up the engine. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.